Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael Fuckerini here with Cal Donjala. Hey, pal. How are you? Danny Dubs. Our right, beloved Jake Matera is stuck at his swingers retreat in Florida, so we're hoping to catch up with him sometime in the near future. We're actually going to meet him down there in Florida next week. I'm starting to think he's the fucking diddler, to be honest with you. No. Buddy, he gets diddled once a month now. I, I think know, he may be doing the diddling. I don't know. Yeah, it does seem that way, man. Yeah. He does a lot think, of porking. I think Furman be out. Mm-hmm. Furman be diddling. He he gets that caboose going, man. It's he's like when Furman fucks, it's like one of those old timey railroad things that you and a buddy jack on. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like you're going anywhere fast until you get a good rhythm going. Yeah. And he'll put you through a fucking headboard. Yeah, you get a little downhill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope you're wearing a fucking helmet when Jake's on you. <laughs> yeah, Jake's nickname at the Swingers Clubs is Downhill Furman. <laughs> so watch out if you got him porking behind you. John, I feel terrible, man. I forgot your coin again. That's all right. We go, we're going to make do. We are. But, um, yeah, I know. I, I think that that's my lucky coin. At, well, Seems like it. Not yet, <laughs> but it feels good when I do it. Um, I know we talked, we, we were on Dad Meet earlier talking about your trip to Vegas. You want to talk about it at all for the uh Yeah, sure, thinkers? I would love to. Yeah, um, just got back from... I was about to say beautiful Las Vegas, but it's anything but beautiful. It's actually the most disgusting fucking city I've ever been to. It is fucking <laughs> nasty, man. But a great time was had, man. Skankfest fucking rules. It's just like last year. It's it's the best four days of the fucking year. And if you've ever been there, I'm sure you'll you'll agree. If not, then I don't know. You might have got your wallet stolen there or something. Yeah, it was really that nasty. Truly, like walking um, around the streets was gross. I mean, John, you know me. Like I'm a disgusting individual. And you were grossed out every day. Yeah. But fortunately, there was enough good company there as to where if you were inside, you didn't have to think about how disgusting the city was. Yeah. Dude, there, this was nice. There were more midgets that I've seen in the past week than I knew existed. <laughs> They're everywhere. Would you put the number in the triple digits? No, not triple digits, but I would say I, I saw a couple dozen midgets. Do you think there was a convention? No, I think it's like a charging station for them. <laughs> so they were plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. All, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Every race, creed, color, nationality, just everything. It really was nice to to know they exist because you forget they exist because I feel like you just don't normally see them anymore. It's like a four-leaf clover. Mm-hmm. To, to you know, It's rare. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a midget this year, to be honest. Yeah, you, you think maybe like God got in trouble somehow. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll fucking... <laughs> His fucking God's boss was like, enough with the fucking midget party, dude. <laughs> Honestly, I think what did it was, it was probably the combination of Josie's death and Vern Troyer's death just hit everybody so hard that, that God, God was just like, him. I can't do this to people anymore. Great for the small casket industry, <laughs> terrible for normal-sized people hearts. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the midget casket industry for doing God's dirty work. Do you think midgets have their own casket guy or do you think they just go to the child casket guy? <laughs> well, I don't know. There's got to be a, a width difference for a child casket versus a... Children are getting fatter. That's true. I'm and gonna, I'm going to go children casket shopping one day. <laughs> you want to get real sad and go into a... <laughs> Go into a child casket store with me. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah all, all of my uh, all of my morals have been thrown out the window with this podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll go child caskets shopping with you. Were any of these midgets? Were they all? Um, did they seem like tourists, or were they like uh... some? Some are clearly making some money on Fremont Street, is where the event was, mm-hmm. and the hotel where I stayed was three blocks from Fremont, and it was. Normally, I enjoy people watching, but man, this had the the highest concentration of just fucked up nubs, missing limbs, children with their hooker moms. Yikes! Yeah, that is some shit I've never seen. I've only yeah. been to Vegas a couple times, but I I never went to that area. Yeah, you don't want to see most of this shit. But again, a great time. Are they there? So some of them are like making money as like panhandler, um, like street performer yep. kind of thing. Are they dressed up like uh, some of them are e-box like box or something? Well, it's, uh, I was the guy that I was thinking of as you posed that question was that it, the one of the better ones was a guy dressed as Chewbacca. 
tiny Chewbacca? Not a midget Chewbacca, but like a normal Chewbacca. Oh. One of the street performers. And he was just posing for pictures. There was a f- fucked up Freddy Krueger. Um, but as far as like midget performers, most of them, I don't know how many I saw, but like I would say the ones I did see were just begging for money or doing karaoke. Nothing too crazy. Karaoke? Yeah, everybody in a wheelchair has a karaoke machine out there. And they're singing just themselves. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that's weird. I wonder if there's some kind of internet database for like midgets midget tourism Hmm. like the amount of midgets that visit like are there realistically more midgets that visit las vegas than any other i bet there is yeah like are your chances if you're trying to go on a trip and see a bunch of midgets Mm -hmm. is your best bet going to las vegas dude i gotta think there's a guy that probably dresses like you that has a major heart on for midgets that tracks them in a helicopter like wild hogs (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the helicopter's got to be pretty low to the ground to see those guys. It's actually just a drone. <laughs> <laughs> but there's got to be somebody that's obsessed with them more than we are that could give us some intel. Yeah, I'll start looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I'm sure uh, Disney World had to hire a lot of midgets in the past, right? For like short characters or something? Yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if we'll see any Florida midgets when we're there. By short characters, you mean lowercase? We got it. Florida seems like the kind of place where they probably attract a lot of midgets. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. Seems like gator bait. <laughs> They're just asking for it. <laughs> yeah, they are human chum. <laughs> <laughs> but if you move to Florida, it's clear you like to live on the edge. So I got to think there's there's midgets with death wishes. Yeah. That are just like some thrill seeking midgets. Let's do this, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Dare me to walk past this shallow pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy, you ready to flip that coin? I, I got. Am. I really hope we do a stinker tonight, John, and that you don't get your way, because you have somebody good and planned. I'm in love again. Oh, <gasps> really? Yeah. We did a, a bad bitch last week that you were not in love with. I did not love her because she was an evil Nazi, a little damn nasty ass. You can't. You can't get on on the side of somebody like that. Yeah. Even I have my bounds. Yeah. Good for you. I'm glad. Thanks, buddy. But I'm right. in love right now, and I hope I win tonight. All right. I almost want to hear about her, but I almost want to tell you about Brian Quinn Moore. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to redo it. All right, do it again, yeah? Ah, you bastard. You lucky son of a bitch. Let's do it, baby. You brought some good luck home from Vegas, it looks like. Oh, uh, you know what? I did not have very... Well, kind of. I ate shit on slots. However, I did pretty well on, on sports betting. Did you? I did, yeah. I won a couple hundred bucks. Fuck yeah, dude. That rules. That's like, you left with more money probably, right? No, if if I didn't do slots, because I think I probably lost a couple hundred bucks in slots, but. Slots just seems like literally throwing out money to me. Yeah, it really was, man. There's no, like, fun skill involved, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hated it. I even, I, I, the one thing I do like was playing Wheel of Fortune slots. Okay. Because I like when you get them them three spins and it says Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, that's your thing. Yeah, even though anytime you do get the spin, you win like twenty five bucks, even though you just put in like a couple fucking hundred. Oh yeah. So, but neither here nor there. I'm ready to tell you about the lady I'm in love with. Is she a true bad bitch? She is. Okay. And I completely agree with her motives. Oh. And I love her for. Yet another reason is that she had her back back against the wall her entire life. She was widely viewed as a moron, which I can I can identify with, and she was viewed as ugly as shit by just about everybody she encountered. Oh, dude, do you agree? She's beautiful to me. Good. That's that's what you say to an ugly bitch you're trying to fuck, <laughs> even though she's been dead for a very. That's long what time. you say when Tony Robbins uh fucking <laughs> tricks you in an elevator to think. Ugly women are beautiful, like in the movie Shallow House starring Black Jack. Oh, Jack yeah, Black. Black yeah. Jack Blackcock. <laughs> <laughs> Hypnotize. That's the word I was looking for. Woo! I'm fucking dumb tonight, baby. Yeah, you're welcome to the club, baby. <laughs> I might be as dumb and ugly as this bitch you're about to tell me about. Don't you dare talk about her that way. <laughs> Dude, this is especially fucked up, too, because the one book I could find about her, it's not even a book, it's more of a booklet, but the one booklet that I found dedicated to her, what do you think the title was? Dumb, ugly bitch. The title of the book was Ugly as Hell. 
No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. There's a book uh, called Ugly as Hell by a lady named Carla Glenn. And you're talking, when you say booklet, does it even have a spine or is it just something you... It's, it was an e-book. Trifold, okay. An e-booklet, so. How, is this lady from the 1900s when she committed her crimes? Yes, that's when she committed her crimes. She okay. was born in 1883. Oh, really? Yeah. That's an old bitch. It, yeah, John. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm just trying to test my boundaries. And she, dude, even where she sounds from makes her sound like a rough bitch. She's from a place called Hard Scrabble, Ohio. That's not a real place. It is, babe. I've never heard of it. I that. called you babe. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll tell you, I was just going to let it roll off my back, baby. When you've seen this bitch, like, you look like a babe to me. <laughs> Although you are beautiful. Thank you to everybody that's been complimenting John's beautiful eyes. Thanks. Yeah, it's getting too much, so I had to put glasses on. No, I don't do that to him. <laughs> No, you can't do that. It's like when you tell a lady she's got a fat ass, and then she comes in the next day with one of those fucking sarongs wrapped around mm-hmm. it. Yeah, let me see that fucking dumper you that got thing. under there. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Let me see that thing. <laughs> let me see those baby midgets you got back there. So this lady uh, committed murder, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, a lot yeah. of murder. Yeah, a bunch of it, man. And uh, she poisoned a bunch of people. She was... Uh, an arsenic bitch. Wow. Yeah. A lost art. It really is, man. And when you hear about why she did it, I think you'll probably be on my side. You can't be mad at her. I don't think you're as much of a scumbag as I am, but I think you're a reasonable person. And when you hear about why she did it. I is it a uh, alien warn uh, uh, style? Like she was treated badly by a certain type of person and she went after that type of person. Do you want to try and get your tongue and your lips on the same page so you could say that sentence again? I thought it came out pretty good the first time. Oh, on a funny note, uh, Eileen Warnos, uh, in roughly a half hour before you walked in here, I was able to book her motel room that she lived in get for the when fuck we go out. to Florida. Yeah, buddy. Did you like call and talk on the phone? I did, and I talked to a woman with the thickest Indian accent I've ever heard. So Indian accent. Mm-hmm. Exotic. Do you think they're outsourcing their calls? Or <laughs> their murders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did it seem like, because um, when we went to the El Coyote restaurant mm-hmm. uh, and you requested the Sharon Tate table, it kind of seemed like that's not an irregular thing. Mm-hmm. Did this lady seem like a lot of people call to stay and rent this room? No, I mean, she really didn't question me when I asked for the room number. Okay. It was pretty straightforward. So you just asked for the specific room number, not the the m- room from the movie Monster. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's so, the um, room number? It was eight, but now it's seven. Oh, okay. So They can't fool you. We're going to be in that bed, baby. Yes, dude. All three of us, me, you, Fairman. <laughs> I love sharing a bed with two of my boys. I know. <laughs> well, another boy films it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you see the three of us in that bed? You're going to fucking unsubscribe from this podcast faster than your fingers can fucking smash that keyboard. <laughs> Back to my bad bitch, Martha Wise. Tell me about her. It's a sexy name, isn't it? Martha Wise is kind of sexy, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, oh, man, it is even more heartbreaking that this dumb bitch's name was Wise. <laughs> she just makes me love her more. Now, why, are, why is everybody calling her a fucking moron? Dude, I don't know, man, because, I mean... I don't think you could really fault somebody for being uneducated in fucking hard scrabble Ohio in, in the 1880s. 1883 when yeah. fucking ladies born. But dude, there were even fucking teachers where it was uh there was a teacher who they interviewed after her crimes came to light who described my woman Martha Wise as the dumbest kid in school <laughs> and too dumb to make trouble. Like, she said she couldn't have possibly done these things because she was too dumb? At least as a child. I don't know. Okay. But, and there were, all right, I'll get too to it. Too dumb later. to cause trouble. I've never heard that phrase <laughs> yeah, before. It's pretty fucking bad, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this bitch was born in Hard Scrabble, Ohio. She had three brothers and one sister. All right. And she did terrible in school, a very dumb child. As you heard her teacher describe her as being too dumb to make trouble. She never got in any trouble, so... Not a lot of information in regards to her, like her being fucked up or any kind of head injuries or setting shit on fire or what was the other part of the triad? Wrecking her meat early or something? Peeing the bed. Yeah, peeing the bed, yeah. no, None of that shit. So in 1906, where she is 23, she meets a man. Good she meets her. a man named Albert Wise at something called a box social. You ever hear of that? Yeah. Is it like a... a- 
single people go and meet and dance and kind of shit? Kind of, but there's like a specific element to it that's that's very unique. What do they do? I like it. So the ladies prepare a box lunch for two. And the gentlemen suitors at the event will bid on each box. And they auction it off. And then you get to share the meal with the lady who prepared it, who later reveals her. Did you like decorate the outside of the box to make it look like spray it with perfume yeah. or something to yeah. entice? Mm -hmm. Huh. Her fucking box is just a fucking fucked up cardboard bag. <laughs> just a shoe box with a turtle in it. <laughs> Hope you're hungry for shells. <laughs> I hear you like stuffed shells. <laughs> That's a joke, I know. <laughs> And the turtle's just hiding in the shell like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe this fucking dumb bitch put me through this shit again. I hate this. If I could hang myself, I would. I can't believe I'm about to be a bowl of retard soup. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently she was a good cook. Uh, her specialty was chicken sandwiches. Huh. So she won Albert Wise over with her famous chicken sandwich. Nice. Dude, I would cut my neighbor's head off to have a lady prepare food for me. Which neighbor? All of them. <laughs> Any of them and all of them to have a fucking home-cooked meal for a change, John. I don't even know how I'm overweight. <laughs> but Albert-wise, he initially he was okay. He had a 50-acre farm where when they got married, they set up shop on, and however, when they got to the farm to live there, he treated her like a fucking slave. Put her to work, was fucking whipping her ass, Dude, she was, um, she was fucking, uh, what do they call it? Something the hogs. Oh, man, I forget this fucking term, but it's a very funny term. High on the hog is a term, I think. Slopping the hogs. So she was slopping the hogs. That was her job. Like, that's what she, she did on the... Well, she plowed the field and, field and uh, she slopped the hogs, which were two of her primary duties. And I think that's just, like, throwing a bucket of fucking yeah, whatever slop you... into the trough yeah whatever the family doesn't fucking eat they rather than throw it out yeah. they just throw it into the fucking pig pen and that's called slopping the hogs <laughs> which is our next podcast where john and i <laughs> talk about what we're currently eating <laughs> so this poor thing dude even when she's fucking pregnant so she eventually she has five children her first one dies as a child uh like a baby child <laughs> Is it like an infant death or? Yeah, he dies as an infant. Okay. All right. Now, she's fucking miserable. She has five kids. The so one baby dies. She's now stuck with four kids and a fucking dickhead husband. However, in 1923, her husband, Albert, passes away. They don't think anything of it. They just determine that he dies from stomach inflammation. Okay. So this is probably where she got started with poisoning people with arsenic. Yeah. She eventually gets found out because she goes to the, the drugstore so often to buy arsenic. <laughs> well, they are. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, go one town over. I, I am not dumb enough to make trouble. <laughs> so this motherfucker dies, and she falls in love with a farmhand who lives, who works on a farm close by. This guy's name is Walter Johns. All indications are that this guy had no feelings for her. He was just a polite man who would humor her when she would come onto the farm and she would fucking try to try to win him over with her famous chicken sandwiches, homemade cookies, homemade lemonade, lemonade which would easily get me to fall in love with a dumb bitch. Yeah, especially with a fertile pussy like that. <laughs> She's pumping those things out. <laughs> she needs to keep that uh, pussy, farm, yeah, right? Dude, you get, yeah, your whole life, dog. <laughs> She does. She keeps the farm, and he also leaves her 1800 bucks. That's a fortune back then, right? I, yeah, early 1900s. Yeah. Man, that's a fucking come up. You could buy like 20 Sibians for that money back then. <laughs> She's convinced that this guy that she keeps giving food to, this gentleman named Walter Johns, is also in love with her. However, Walter already has a wife and family of his own. Fucking homewrecker. Right, and there's no indication that he ends up banging her, although there were some pretty funny rumors that were spread throughout the town. The funniest of which was that people claim to overhear Walter and Martha fucking, and they says said that when she would fuck, Martha would make dog noises. That's 
if that is just a rumor <laughs> it's pretty good that rumor. the funny guy in town made up, <laughs> that fucking rules, dude. Just some classmate that was like, I bet that bitch sound like a dog when she gets fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of family pressure to get her to leave this man alone, specifically her mother and her Aunt Lily. And she was in heaven thinking that this guy's in love with her, this poor thing. Just let her have it. You know, she's got nobody else to make fucking chicken sandwiches for. <laughs> Poor thing's making lemonade cookies, chicken sandwiches, and what she's going to do, fucking slap the hogs with it? No, John, she doesn't want to slap the hogs with all this good shit. But her family's breaking her balls to fucking stop, to stop interacting with this dude. Eventually, the peer pr- she gives in to the peer pressure, and she stops fucking with this guy. Because it's a bad look for her to go try yeah. to court a married man. It is, and that's yeah. I, I'm thinking that's po- their point of view, but also, it seems as though everybody in this bitch's life abused her. Yeah. So I really feel for her. Yeah, the one guy that doesn't treat her like shit, that eats her sandwiches, like you know, let, yeah, her, let this retard make her sandwiches, man. <laughs> like, what what is that going to do to anybody? Yeah. If the guy's wife has that big of a problem with it, she can come out to the fucking field and punch her in her dumb fucking head. <laughs> And they usually yeah, learn their life after exactly, one punch man. to the head. <laughs> uh, uh, a couple of very fucked up things that I learned about her was that the husband, when he got her to the farm and he quickly revealed that this is not going to be a happy relationship and that she was going to be working, he threw a shovel at her and said, get to work, bitch. For real? Yeah. Damn. And he would also smack her on the ass with a hickory stick when she didn't get work done, <laughs> according to his liking, so... This guy's a real no good nick. Dude, that's the only the only other term I've heard or the only other time I've heard the term hickory stick is from like a Adam Sandler album <laughs> sketch <laughs> where a goat gets beat with it. <laughs> you have any idea what a hickory stick is? It's like a uh, like a billy club. Is it for like hitting animals or for like just a weapon? I think it's just for like Midwest beatings. <laughs> okay. I'll get Jake with one one time. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun if, like, we just, maybe since he's not here, he won't know about this. We could plan it now. What if we each brought in a hickory stick for the next episode, and at one point we just popped up and just started beating the living shit out of Jake with it? <laughs> that sounds like a very funny bit. Thank you, man. <laughs> Danny, I'll get you one, too. You want to come running in and just beat the living piss out of Jake? <laughs> Let's fuck him up pretty bad. Hey, Siri, order three hickory sticks from Amazon. <laughs> Extra large. <laughs> They're starting. The order almost went through. Oh, Stop it. oh, come on, man. Let it go through. <laughs> I'll have to read some reviews of these hickory sticks. <laughs> I want to make sure they leave pretty big marks on my buddy Jake. Yeah, maybe we should coat him in ink before we start beating him. The sticks are the Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get Jake to roll around in black paint. <laughs> we won't explain why we're doing it. And then push his naked ass outside. <laughs> Ooh, I hope he does not listen to this until <laughs> next week. <laughs> Jake, it's not black face. It's black body, dude. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. You're not going to get in trouble for this. I mean, my God, it's for the podcast that you make money on, Jake. Just roll around some fucking black paint for everybody. That's the rule. If, you're black, if your back and shoulders are black as well, you can't get in trouble. Yep. You're grandfathered in. <laughs> so this poor thing's got nothing to look forward to. She eventually finds an activity that she does enjoy. What do you think she starts getting into? Fucking using a hickory stick to bat a big wheel down the street. What did people do in the 1900s? She started going to funerals. Whoa. For the free luncheon? (laughs) Dude, it wouldn't even have to be somebody that she knew. When she found out that somebody local died, she went to the funeral. That's that's nice. Well, it gets to the point where she starts making a spectacle at these funerals. As she gets more and more comfortable going to funerals, she starts making a scene, primarily by crying loudly. Like at the casket? Yes. She would scream why over and over again. That's like maybe evil if she has evil intent, but if it's not, it's so fucking funny. (laughs) Do not know somebody and just go and be a wailing fucking non-widow. Not a big deal, man. I mean, especially, I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's not a big deal because I've been to funerals where people have carried on and uh, it's been mostly family. So at that point, you're just like, knock it off. But if it was a complete stranger, it would be very funny and it would really lighten the mood. 
Yeah, everybody's like, who is that guy? Yeah. I think I told you before, but my, my slow Uncle Eddie tried to get my grandpa's casket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really bummed out. They didn't just let him, just to see what he would do in there. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do in there, Eddie? Yeah, what, do you, what do you think he would have gotten up to? Just cuddled with him. Yeah, maybe like, somebody bring me a blanket. <laughs> nope, we're not bringing you one. <laughs> Should have brought your own blanket in there. Yep. That fucking simpleton. <laughs> Bless his simple heart, man. R.I.P. Uncle Eddie, man. He he passed in 2015. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then he died of a simple heart. <laughs> you have any slow uncles? Uh-uh. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. <clears throat> You can share mine with me. Thank you. <laughs> so this poor thing, all she's got in life is to go to funerals of people she doesn't know. And it's a relatively small town, so how many people could be fucking dead on a regular basis? Right, yeah. She doesn't have much. And, oh, John, get this. Eventually, Walter takes his family and they move to Cleveland, Ohio. So she doesn't even have her fucking man to cook chicken for anymore if she wanted to, even though she stopped doing it. Did he just up and leave? And she had yeah. no... Yep. No idea. Yeah, she's just standing out in the middle of the field with a fucking chicken sandwich and fresh lemonade like a fucking moron. Like a like a kind soul in my yeah. mind. Yeah, like thank a, you. Like a dumb, kind soul bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite kind of woman, a dumb, kind soul bitch. Just fucking salty lemonade, this fucking idiot. Mm, that sugar did in you there. make this? Mmm. <laughs> mmm, so good. <laughs> Pulling a bunch of feathers out of your chicken sandwich. <laughs> and she's not looking. You just pour the cup of lemonade into your pants. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Hmm. I drank so much I had to relieve myself <laughs> in my pantaloons. So her man, or who th- she thinks is her man, leaves. In Thanksgiving 1924, she's like, fuck this shit. She's really got it out for her family. What do you think she does? <sighs> I hope she doesn't poison her family members. She does. Mom and aunt mm-hmm. kills them. Not a, not a, initially. So the mom, the mom and the aunt. All right. So the mom's name is Sophia, and the aunt is named Lily. She poisons them, and I think it takes them maybe a week or so to die. She poisons other people there, and she does it by poisoning the water and the coffee. Okay. Water, I feel like, I don't know what the water was like when you're pulling it out of a well in 1915, but Mm -hmm. I feel like there's not enough flavor in there to disguise a chemical, you know? Coffee you might be able to get by with, but it's like, does this water taste like arsenic? Why is my water on fire? I wonder if we could taste a little bit of arsenic without getting too (laughs) sick. (laughs) Would you be up for that? Yeah, let's do it in Disneyland. All right, maybe maybe we can give it to Jake after we beat the shit (laughs) out (laughs) of him. Jake, we're sorry. Here, this is the, the remedy. <laughs> so make your bruises disappear. Feels like you're hitting my insides with hickory sticks. <laughs> mm. So are they like uh, just in bed dying for a week or are they like slowly succumbing to it? It, it takes them a couple weeks to die. So it takes the mom and the aunt a few weeks to die. That's not good enough for her. Or it takes the mom dies first, okay? Even though everybody at dinner has been poisoned. Damn. New Year's Eve, 1924, her Uncle Fred and the Aunt Lily, her Aunt Lily, are both given more poison. So they're killed. Their kids get so sick that some of them some of them are left partially paralyzed. Jesus, how old were the kids? Still children? John, I don't fucking know, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. I asked another question, didn't I? <laughs> I'm so, so sorry, Mike. So this takes, it takes roughly a month for the aunt and uncle to die from arsenic poisoning. And apparently, like, when you have arsenic poison, your stomach just feels like it's on fucking fire. Yeah. And just excessive vomiting, excessive diarrhea. Just not a, not a picnic, John. <laughs> Sounds like day 17 at Taco Bell for me. How are you making out? Um, Pretty good. Mm. Only one shit today, but how detailed do you want to get? I want to hear it all, <laughs> baby. I'm going to close my eyes because I want you to paint that vivid of a picture. Honestly, I mean, the first 14 days went pretty smoothly, mm. and then... uh. My girlfriend made some some chicken soup the other night, and that sent me to talk the, faster, John. To the hopper for a couple rounds. Um, Mike, your dick is out. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth and your hands. 
Cup your hands together, John. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll catch it. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. Yeah, it's 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 getting better. I haven't taken a Modi MAD though, so that's a pretty good sign. You look great too. I mean, for somebody that's eaten Taco Bell for over two fucking weeks, you look pretty good. Man. Thank you. I think it honestly might be better be than what I normally eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all told, fucking Martha ends up poisoning seventeen family members. Jesus Christ! They're all family members. Yep. Fuck. And you're including the first husband. As a family, I'm member. not including that, so okay. it may be 18, and they all died. No, okay. Some there were, were three deaths. It was the mom, the aunt, and the uncle, and then four, four of their children were left partially paralyzed. And at this point, word starts getting around that, like, yo, know, you should probably look at fucking Martha Wise because she's probably responsible for everybody around her dying mysteriously. So the cops do. They find out that Martha was buying arsenic from the local drugstore. They question her about it, and she says she was buying arsenic to feed the rats. I mean, would a would a fucking moron think of that? That's some pretty yeah. That's pretty. That's quick on your feet. She's sharp, man. She is sharper than she gets credit for. Also, at this time, she passes the time setting barns on fire, and she even sets three churches on fire. Yowzer! Yeah, three churches in one town. Yep, that's a lot of churches. It is. I mean. How, how do you get to the third church in one town where you get caught? <laughs> it's like, you weren't watching the church for the dumb bitch? Yeah, so much for being too dumb to make trouble, John. Yeah, right? I'll show you. What is one place, if you could get away with burning it down, that you would burn down? Hmm. Um, probably like, probably like a f- French consulate or something. <laughs> what did they ever do to you? I just don't like. I've waited on a couple French people before. Oh no, they're that bad. Yeah, they're the worst. I hate French people. Oh, John, I'm sorry to hear that. I never knew that about. Sorry, them. if you're a French listener, stop. We don't want your money. Oh no. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go. Top top ten worst races to wait on. Number one. <laughs> uh, you're not going to trick me again with this. <laughs> Number one through ten, baby. It's the French. Oh Those no. Fucking frogs. <laughs> it's just. I mean. Not getting tipped by a European is almost expected in America. Tip? Yeah. But, like, there's a, a rudeness that comes along with their attitude. You know what I mean? Now that I think about this, I have experienced this with uh, Uber. When I used to drive Uber, one of my first passengers was a French couple, and the guy was an absolute dickhead. Right? For, like, no reason. Yeah. Just an air of superiority. Yeah. And fucking... They try to smoke cigarettes in your car. They they did not, this couple, but... Don't even think about putting on a fucking striped shirt, you piece of shit. You piece of French shit. Yeah, I, I wish I had been honest with them. And, uh, I, I tried to go the extra mile when I drove for Uber for the short period of time that I did. You I, dropped them off one mile away from where they wanted to be? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I followed, like, these guidelines that Uber would send you saying, like, hey, try to go the extra mile for people to get them, you know, to get them to leave you five-star reviews. Now, at the time, like, people were encouraged or discouraged to tip there was no tipping option on the uber app huh. they kept telling people like no don't worry about tipping whereas it's insane not to tip yeah some people would still do it even though they were explicitly told not to just tip. with cash yeah just with cash huh. but i would have i would have mints in my car and i would have water for everybody i love it when a driver yeah I'm, i never even take them up on it but mm-hmm. it's like it's such a nice thing would you like a mint would you like some water yeah i got a box of tissues here's the aux cord it is nice, but then, like, I would eventually stop because people would just leave a mess in my fucking car. Yeah. At the time, I had a very nice car, my, my Perkmobile, which... That's what you drove Uber R. in? I yeah, man, I, I Ubered in my Chrysler 300, and... Man. It would be so funny if you still had passengers in it when it got repoed. <laughs> just a drunk dude <laughs> to sleep in the back. <laughs> yeah, so th- that fucking dickhead, man. I, I, I wish I had the balls to just tell him, like, look, buddy, and... Six years, I'm going to start a murder podcast because it's all I think about. <laughs> How much trouble would you have gotten in if you dropped off? Let's say this guy is being a real dickhead mm-hmm. in the back of your car, and you're like, I want him out of my car right now. I don't care where we are. You drop him off in fucking Chester or something. Mm-hmm. Would you get in a lot of trouble for that? I don't know, man. It's so hard to get a hold of anybody, like with anything. Like if you have issues with Uber. I never had anything big, but I know there was like an office you could go to if you had a major issue, but mm-hmm. it was... 
you know, who's got time to fucking do that shit? Yeah, that's weird that, like, an a phone app-based company has a fucking a, a brick-and-mortar complaints department that you have to, like, yeah. drive to. Yeah. It's weird. It was weird. And to, to actually get set up to drive for Uber, I had to meet a guy who didn't speak much English, a Russian fellow, who had me meet him in the Delilah Strip Club parking lot to prove that my car worked. That was Uber's protocol. Yeah. That seems strange. I don't think that's still how it works, right? I don't know, man. This was 2014. Yeah, I feel I'm like sorry, 15. There's no way that... There's so many people that drive for Uber. You can't have, like, an actual guy that meets all these people, you know? Mm. What well, was it just, like, if you have, like, a certain rating on Uber, you could become, like, one of these delegates... Hmm. that approved new drivers or disallowed them from working from Uber. Huh. Strange. Mm -hmm. Did you ask him if he wanted to go in for a dance after he checked your car out? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Do you think terrifying. that he chose Delilah's for a reason? They probably, did yeah. He, he actually came out of there to meet <laughs> yeah. me. Dude, yeah. so, so this... Car, the car smells good. Smell my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so my girl Martha... She's being questioned by the sh by the sheriff, who eventually breaks her down. And he's questioning her during a rainstorm. And as he's questioning her during the rainstorm, he tells her, "I know you did it, and the reason why I know I did it, why I know you did it, is because this rainstorm was sent by God. And it's a sign from Him to tell us that you're the one responsible for these murders." Okay, and this was Officer Fucking. This guy's dumber than her. It worked. Because she eventually admits to the murders. Oh, my God. He was just saying that to get a dumb person to cop to it. Yeah, she's probably legally retarded. Damn. He pulled out some fucking Indian rain dance shit on her. <laughs> and one of the things that she admits, uh, this is March 23rd, 1925, where she's arrested. And they ask her why she killed all these people. And she says, I really enjoyed going to funerals, and there just weren't enough funerals for me. That's all she ever said about it. Like, yeah. that was the... Do you believe that? That was. I believe that's part of it. I mean, it, the M.O. lines up. She was attending a lot of funerals before starting to poison her entire family. She was, and I think also I would pair that with her getting so upset that she wasn't allowed to see the one person who would show her kindness, which was this nice guy who worked in the fucking field to yeah. accept these retard chicken sandwiches. Would you accept a chicken sandwich from a special lady? I don't know. There, I mean, there's there's a hundred and fifty percent chance of it being filled with bones. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. You're just fucking pulling full bones, like also, a cat is, in a cartoon. <laughs> what does a chicken sandwich look like in the early 1900s? It's not lunch meat. I don't know. It's just like a rotisserie chicken that you just pull pieces of. I instinctively thought of Chick Fil A sandwich, which was like a, a breast kind yeah. of thing. Hmm. I wonder. I wish I could see a picture of these chicken sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't know, man. But she's eventually charged with the murder. Uh, May 4th, 1925, her trial begins. She pleads insanity. Hmm, that was already I, a thing back then. I don't know how nuts she is, but um, the defense argues that she was driven to kill by this poor fellow named Walter Johns because they think that like they may have been having an affair. They actually call him back from Cleveland to testify against her and they arrest him on some fucking bogus charge and that arrest is what kind of gets all the, the gossip in town going and the one rumor comes out that she barks during sex <laughs> which is a very funny rumor. It's one of the top rumors I've ever heard. And dude, it takes them one hour before they determine that she's guilty. Is I mean, there's no such thing as pleading stupidity because, I mean, you, you went to the fucking store, bought arsenic, you right. know what it does, you poison right. these people, and it worked, mm -hmm. so you can't be that dumb. No. She knows what that arsenic do. <laughs> do you think people, uh, do you think people can claim Lynn sanity if they're Nick's <laughs> <Yeah>. fans? <laughs> One of her victims was Asian, and she claimed Lynn's sanity for that one. I don't know, man. But, dude, she... It takes one hour before they find her guilty of... 
I think they they initially found her guilty of her mother's murder. And she's sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. The one chance that she has a parole would have to come from executive clemency. So the governor would have to, it would have, the order would have to come from him. Okay. Like, I don't think it's relying upon a parole board. Yeah. Fortunately for her, in 1962, the governor paroles her. No way. Yep. There's a governor named Mike DeSalle who paroles her. She's 80 years old? Yeah, she's 79. 79 yeah. Holy shit. She's 79 years old. She gets out. However, she's only out for three days before she returns. Nobody would take her in. She couldn't find a place to live, you mean? She couldn't. Nobody would take her. Her remaining family refused to take her in. Uh, no shit. She killed the rest <laughs> of them. Dude, um, well, she would, yeah, she would poison them at fucking Thanksgiving, and one of the family members was a caterer, and they asked him if they could take, take her in. He's like, no. Like, could I get a job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So she Getting goes out of jail after 50 years, it's 40 years. That's such a, like a technological advancement. Like you go out and it's like the fucking interstate exists. There's yeah. cars everywhere. It's so weird. What did she go back into jail for? They just let her back in. Like almost as a, I think it's almost as like kindness thing. Yeah. And I, I think they could technically reject the governor's clemency, which with which I'm guessing she agreed upon and said, I just want to live here and finish out my days because she had purpose in there and I think they treated her with respect. So it was much different than anything she experienced on the outside. That's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, you're 79 years old. That's sad. I feel... Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that actually kind of makes me sad. Yeah, nobody her. would take her in. It's like if, if I was there, I would have taken her in because... If I took her in, she wouldn't have to worry about the outside world because that bitch wouldn't leave the bedroom, if you know what I'm talking about. You are nasty, <laughs> brother. <laughs> We'd be making our own chicken sandwiches. <laughs> With extra spunk mm. on it, bro. I would be driving that El Pollo Loco. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to an El Pollo Loco myself recently. That doesn't surprise me. And boy, they really give Taco Bell a run for their money. Ah, One, I've never had a pollo loco. Yeah, the quesadilla is off the fucking hook, dude. What? Best five dollar quesadilla I ever had in my goddamn life. Wawa's quesadilla is pretty good. You ever have that? I have. I don't think I found the right combination yet. Oh. I get it with just cheese sometimes. Because mm -hmm. they just put a lot of meat in there if you eat like chicken. You know. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to agree to disagree on that. Mm -hmm. We will. Papa, get this. I got some sad news about. Uh, the love of my life, don't, Martin don't, Wise. Do not tell me she died. Well, she did live for a while. I want her to be alive today and 140 years old. I have some bad news, John. No, Mike, I can't take this. <laughs> June 28, 1971, she passed away. Fucking almost, almost 90 10 years. years old? Yeah. Another 10 years in jail. Yeah. I, I would venture to bet that she would not have lasted 10 years if she did not go back into jail. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Died at 88. That's fucking incredible for mm -hmm. someone supposedly that dumb, born in the 1800s, to live yeah. that long. Yeah. It's wild. Happy birthday in heaven. Yeah. What was her birth name? Ah, uh, fuck. What, what was it? Mar Martha fucking... Sorry, man, I should know this. And I'm not even going to yell at you for not knowing it. Well, it took a lot uh, of bravery for me to even ask that question. So <laughs> I appreciate that you didn't snap at me. Oh, man, wait till I get that hickory stick. <laughs> well, I'm going to have one, too. <laughs> I can't wait to hit Jake, man. He does not deserve any of this. <laughs> I'm going to go for his knees. Oh, man. I'm going to try to buckle him. I'm going to make him suck my hickory stick. <laughs> I want to put that... barbecue sauce on the end of my hickory stick so he can't get mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, we got our Florida trip coming up next week. Are you excited? I am so excited, <gasps> dude. Oh, my God. We got a pool. We got a pool. We got our own house. We're going to have a fucking car. The city, we're going to own the fucking city. We're going to be hanging out the sunroof. Yes. Do we have a sunroof? No, but you can <laughs> hang out the windows <laughs> like dogs. <laughs> What are you most excited for? We got a lot. We got a lot on our plate, and you just 
got a big score with I our did. motel room. I'm so excited, man. I tried calling one other time, and it just kept ringing, but thankfully tonight I touched base with my Indian angel at uh, the Scoot Inn is the name of the place where Eileen Warnos used to live. And, uh, yeah, we got the room that she was in. And apparently, even though they have redecorated a bit, the bed frames remained, and the bathroom fixtures are the same fixtures that she had. From what, uh, 90s? Or early 2000s? Early, I think 80s. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I bet this place could use a bit of a touch-up, but thank God they kept that room as it is. Yeah, strange place. Uh, I noticed one of the bedspreads, or... All the bedspreads, the the way they're decorated, it's like part quilt, part T-shirts from like bike weeks, like sewn together. It's disgusting. It, it is a a gross place that we're going to be staying in overnight. That we're going <laughs> to. I don't think we're going to be staying there overnight. Oh, well, Jake will. Jake will have to stay there. We're going to make him. Well, I mean, he's not going to be able to walk after the hickory <laughs> sticks. <laughs> Do you know how long um, Aileen lived in that? Hotel? I'd, I'd have to look that up. Years? Uh, I don't know about that. And we're going to go to that bar, too, right? We are. What's that called? The Last Resort. Last Resort and the Scoot Inn. These yeah. are, those are, I hope they both sell t-shirts. <laughs> well, I know the Last Resort, they sell Eileen Warno's themed memorabilia. Really? Uh, They're I've, cashing in on murderabilia, too. Oh, dude, I actually think they have Eileen Warno's hot sauce. Which I think would be another fun thing to coat Jake in <laughs> before we beat his ass. That's what happens, Jake. You miss an episode, you get splattered in hot sauce and hickory sticks. <laughs> yeah, we got so much. So we got the Eileen Warno sites, the Casey Anthony stuff. I'm going to find Casey Anthony, and when I do find her, I'm going to profess my love to her. It's been a long time coming, and I think she's ready for it. I think... Um, I didn't tell anybody this yet, but John, I think she's ready to ready to make me a dad again. <laughs> Do you think she is? And then, and then make make you, me uh, not a dad not again. A dad again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Man. We'll see, man. I think uh, my my lovely girlfriend Maggie did some recon for us. Okay, and she forgot that she's now like running her private detective agency. Uh-huh. She was trying to find out what bar she uh, worked at. But I'm pretty sure she knows where, like, where, like, she frequents in South Florida. Oh. It's all like Miami area, yeah, like Fort Lauderdale or something. Um, but if, if if we're up to it, I think we could. I would love that. I think we could go. Um, what would you um? What would your doggy style? <laughs> <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> what uh? <laughs> with her with a strap on behind me. <laughs> Like I haven't even started the question. <laughs> All right, what is it? Was I at least in the ballpark? What would you um give to her as a a peace offering? A hi, hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Ooh, that's a great question, man. You got you could get some flowers. Maybe you could win or something at a a carnival. Oh my god! Yeah, I probably would animal. buy a gigantic teddy bear before I went in there. And say that you won it by shooting uh, fetuses out of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the clown game where you have to smother the clown's face with a water gun. <laughs> oh man, I got to put some time in this. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to write her a note on the plane, and just tell her how beautiful I think she is, and how I think she should have won that hot body contest that she entered. A total travesty that she lost. A truly insane. I don't I, I don't know how the judges can live with themselves. Bro, well, who's crazier? Casey Anthony or that body? God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I I just I'll just be straight up honest with her. I'll I'll tell her what's on my heart, man. And I'll just ask her, you know, if she'd consider moving to Philadelphia. I would tell her that I'd gladly drive all of her stuff up here. And I'd tell her that uh Every day of her life would be a hot body competition, and I'd be the only judge. Buddy, you you made a move. You made my penis twitch. Oh, I'm trying to make her penis twitch. <laughs> I think matters. it's going to work. Right. You made me wet. 
Thank you. That was hot, sexy. I believed it. I don't know if you should show your wife this episode. <laughs> <laughs> She's cool with it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your hall pass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Casey Anthony is my prison pass. <laughs> I gotta find out who my wife's prison pass would be. Honestly, it probably would have been every every chick's probably would have been Aaron Hernandez. He's a handsome guy and he's jacked and he's crazy. As far as uh murderers go, you yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's fucking But very gay. What was he, a tight end? At one time, yeah. Before he got to jail. Then he was a wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was a, a very good tight end. Tell you what, man, that that size fella, mm-hmm. Zach, your Zach Ertz, your Dallas Goddards, your Jason Kelseys, they're the fucking, they're the best guys to have on your fantasy team. Yeah, yeah, I love a fucking jacked six five tight end. Mm-hmm. They're all handsome. They're they all are, riggers. Yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> it's crazy. They all have the same haircut and uh-huh. shape up. I wonder if one barber travels around the country to cut all these tight ends' hairs. <laughs> Is his own business high and tight end. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I should I should be a, good. a wigger tight end barber. But yeah, I'm gonna find Casey Anthony. I'm gonna bring her back with us. Would you mind if she used your ID to fly back home with me? <laughs> she not allowed to fly. Well, I would have to buy an extra ticket and I just don't want to spend that money right now. Yeah, I'll um you know, I'll drive the U Haul with her stuff up okay. up north for us. Yeah. I'll stop in south of the border, pick her up some Fireworks, I know that bitch loves a good fire. Oh, yeah. She is simple. <laughs> yeah, man, I, th- I I really think I have a good shot at it all working out because I think she'll pers- appreciate my sincerity. Uh, I think most people hate her. I think once she sees that, look, baby, I just want to buy you coconut drinks. <laughs> I just want, I just, babe, if you come with me, all, all your drinks going to have an umbrella in it. I don't know why I became retarded in the middle of that. <laughs> I wonder who her like her core friend group is, because you got to be a fucking a down ass bitch to wow. remain friends with a nationally hated individual. Murder. Yeah, dude. I, I allegedly. Don't, yeah, I I don't think that Casey Anthony has girlfriends. I think any quote-unquote, friend she has is probably a dude that's just trying to bang. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bet you there's a fucking neighborhood next to hers just called the friend zone <laughs> of dudes trying to fuck. Man. Uh, yeah, Casey, uh, I just bought you, I was just at the store and I just just bought eight of these tombstone pizzas for you in case you get hungry, but um, yeah, just no big deal if you want to come over and watch f- fucking iCarly with me. You know, I'll, I'll just be watching by myself, so. I'm actually kind of hungry right now, so. There's just 20 voicemails like that on our yeah. phone every single night. <laughs> oh, you know what we could do? What's that? We could present her a case that she could solve. You know what I mean? Like, she's a private detective. Mm-hmm. We could give her a, uh, like a Wild Goose Chase-esque Ooh. thing that just, when she gets to uh, the scene, it can just be you with a, Giant teddy bear and a dozen roses. And then, uh, you know, I could be in the background beating the shit out of Jake with a hickory stick. (laughs) See what gets her rocks off. (laughs) Yeah, so I think I get a good chance with her. So we're going to track down Casey Anthony. We're going to go see Eileen Warnos. We're going to pay a couple of hookers to come into the hotel where, uh, with us. Yeah, I keep forgetting to ask my wife about that. And operate. Yeah, you conveniently <laughs> forgetting. Yeah, would you mind getting your wife to ask my wife if I can get a couple <laughs> of ambiance hookers? Uh, we're going to go to Disney for a day. So, Yeah, we should probably... Uh, I wonder if we can like try to investigate some shady shit at Disney World. we got to look into like... Uh, there's the there's actually a book that called Dark there. Disney. Which talks about a lot of the fucked up shit that happened there. There's like a pretty low number of people who have died there, right? It's like under 30, I think. Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like it's like 20. I gotta think it's something. more, man. Dude, could you imagine, like, they must be like trained assassins, the way they clean up a fucking mm-hmm. death. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody ever hears about it. It's never on the news, you know? Yeah. No one's ever had like a witness account yeah. of them moving a body. Yeah. 
I wonder if they just put it in like a, a goofy costume and then they put it on the stretcher. <laughs> Gosh. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. Can't yeah, wait, I'm man. so excited. I can't wait, man. It's going to be tough to even leave the house. Man, we have a pool. I know. To yeah. ourselves. I know. You ever had a pool to yourself? I don't think I have. No, but you know we're going to be skinny dipping. I can't. I cannot wait to find Jake's penis. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think it's gonna take us? No, it's not, not gonna take me long at all. I'll be fucking blindfolded doing a apple bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bobbing for apples, and apples is what I call Jake's penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna go find Jake's penis and. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna find Casey Anthony. We're gonna find Jake's penis and um, finding Jake's penis. <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, we're gonna do our best. I wonder if we will get complaints about how good of a time we're having at our house. Noise complaints? Yeah, honestly, we'll probably be better behaved than yeah. We're all the we're snotty good. fucking kids yeah. next to us. I bet you we're gonna be surrounded by some loud mouth motherfucker and soda kids. And we'll probably be the, the all-stars of the neighborhood. Oh, brother, I'm going to get a 12-pack of fucking Heineken Zeros. <laughs> but you think I'm something now? Just break all those glass bottles by the pool. And smash them over my own fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have fun, though. Yeah, I'm very excited. All right, buddy. Anything you want to say before we go? That was fast as hell, man. That was a, a whirlwind of an episode. Yeah, I uh, I was wiped out from Skank Fest, so I wanted to pick one that was pretty quick this week. Yeah, are you you feel like you need days more to recover? Uh, this week, yeah, I'm I'm just so fucking tired right now. Yeah, you got to recharge. Yeah, I got to recharge this week, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I need a uh, got a lot of book stuff coming up. Oh, thanks to everybody that's bought On Perks so far. My new book On Perks is available for pre order right now. So if you go to OnPerks dot com, you could pre order that. Um, Man, I can't thank you enough for those of you that have ordered it. It's really, really been awesome to see. If you like anything I do, I'm certain that you will enjoy On Perks. And I'll have that bitch available to ship within a few weeks. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I cannot fucking wait. I already got, I'm going to be mailing them all out myself. I'm gonna Dang. Write something highly sexualized in each book. Damn, you're going to be fucking, you're going to be mailing thousands of books. I know, man, and it's it's a problem that I love that I have. Yeah, that rules. Yeah, I got my wife helping me. My wife, Jamie, is the best. And uh, Damn, how many boxes of books is that going to be? I don't know. The most books that I've ordered in one, one sitting with my previous two books was, I think, 200. And that felt like a lot when it came. It was just like, wow, dude, I am, this is the life. Yeah, and now it's fucking yeah, got, exponentially more than that. Yeah, it's the fucking best, man. Oh, also, if you're in the Philadelphia area, the uh, surrounding uh, area, fuck it, man. If you are if you live in the United States, come to Helium Comedy Club. Shit, man, if you live on planet fucking Earth, <laughs> come to Helium Comedy Club, November 2nd, the first ever live Little Stinkers episode. I wouldn't even limit it to Earth. I would say even if you work with Miss Gladys on planet Jupiter. Yeah, if you share a, a, a galactic bus with Mrs. Galactus... Shit, they told me the show was on healing. I said, shit, healing me ain't nothing but an element. <laughs> Y'all need to pick a real damn place. A stretch Honda element. <laughs> yeah, but fucking November 2nd, we're going to be at Helium. Uh, we have some surprises in store, so I can't wait to reveal those to people. Really? Yeah. Do I know about them? I'll tell you as soon as we're done. Okay. I'm excited. I'm going to oh, tell you one of them. We got so much cool fucking shit going on. This is the life, man. I, I truly feel like the luckiest person on the planet you deserve everything you have baby uh, you too man oh uh, if you come to helium we're gonna have uh merch available for the first time ever we're gonna have some little stinkers t-shirts for sale okay we're gonna have a fucking merch booth bro okay everything's coming up oh man this is the best what a fucking come up i know what a is. come up we're experiencing right? man i can't wait to get the prostitutes in florida <laughs> All right, the next time you see us, I'll have HPV, but it's been a good run. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. If you're not, consider joining the Patreon. It's fucking four bucks a month, or you can just pay $40 a year. You get 
early access to every episode. You get access to all the live AMAs we do, all the live episodes we do, all the mini sneakers episodes we do. I don't know if we've done a mini sneakers episode lately, but we're going to. Okay. All right. So I'll have that lined up in the coming weeks. Yeah, all the other fucking weird shit we do that we're putting on Patreon. Oh, we got a very cool OJ video coming out within the next few weeks. Yes. And uh, stick around for a minute after the show because we have to add something to that that we have to do a voiceover for. Okay. Uh, so all this cool shit's going to be available on the fucking Little Stinkers Patreon. And you can go there. Go to patreon.com slash Little Stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. And it's uh, the most direct way to support us. And, you know, it helps us do all this shit and it helps us to do shit like go to Florida and get hookers. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for supplying us with hookers. All right. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.